Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. And this week, we also celebrate our emancipation. This week's service is coming to you from the parish of St. Matthias on the Eastern Main Road in Laventille. Our chief celebrant is the Reverend Beverly Hoyt, assistant curate at St. Matthias. She's been assisted by Deacon Gerald Hendrickson, who is based at the Cathedral Church of the Holy Trinity. And our lector today is Mrs. Sybil Alexander, also from the parish of St. Matthias. Our intro hymn this morning is the hymn number 559 in our CPWI hymn book. Hymn number 559. Blessed good morning to you, my dear friends in Christ. Our service continues on page 100 with the general sentences, page 100, and then we move to page 101 and onwards. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Hallelujah, hallelujah, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food 
in this holy sacrament. Amen. Collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You are the Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. We will say the collect for emancipation. Let us pray. Liberating God, whose service is perfect freedom, who delivered your people Israel from slavery in Egypt. We thank you for delivering the people of these lands out of enslavement into freedom, and we pray that by your help we will preserve our freedom, respect and defend the freedom of others through him by whom we are, we may, we, by whom we are made free. Your son Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, we sit for the ministry of the word. A reading from the word of God written in Exodus chapter 6, beginning at verse 2 to 13. God also spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord. I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they resided as aliens. I have also heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians have enslaved, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will free you from the burdens of the Egyptians and deliver you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. You shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has freed you from the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I saw to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you for possession. I am the Lord. Moses told this to the Israelites, but they would not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and their cruel slavery. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the Israelites go out of his land. But Moses spoke to the Lord, the Israelites have not listened to me. Why should Pharaoh listen to me? Poor speaker that I am. Thus the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them orders regarding the Israelites and Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to free the Israelites from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm number 114, Psalm 114, on page 621. 
When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why is it, O sea, that you flee? O Jordan, that you turn back? O mountains, that you skip like rams? O hills, like lambs? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. A reading from the Word of God, written in Philemon, beginning at verse 8 to 21. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome, his, welcome him as you welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me even your own self. Yes, brother. Let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The sequence hymn is hymn number 548 in our CPWI hymn book, hymn number 548.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Creator God, we come before you, O God, this morning in thanksgiving. We come, O God, to hear a word from you. We come, O God, that we, O Lord, will be filled with your Holy Spirit. As your Holy Spirit teaches us what we know not. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Share with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This scripture text taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 19, is known in the theological world as the Nazareth Manifesto, since it spells out the mission of Jesus Christ and by extension, our mission in the world. This Nazareth Manifesto is a powerful tool for proclaiming the message of liberation to our then world and our world today. This morning, it has just become so real, so appropriate, since we as a people commemorate the abolition of slavery, the most hideous of crimes against humanity, against God's children. Someone has stated that unless the poor, in every sense of the word, experiences Jesus as liberator, they have not yet heard the good news. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning I share with you on the topic, anointed by the Spirit for mission. In our text, verses 16 through 19 says, when Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The anointing, my dear friends in Christ, symbolizes three grand characteristics. A, special consecration in the case of Jesus, which means to set apart for holy use, use by the Father. B, it symbolizes sweet communion, the point of having fellowship with the Master. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that this sweet communion is transmitted to you and I. And see, shine forth. We who have really experienced the anointing by the Holy Spirit are fully aware of the joy and beauty which radiates from us to others. And that is what the anointing of the Spirit does to us. And so we have looked at what it does. And I want us to now look at the meaning. Or to whom it gives meaning. Who are the objects of this anointing? It says that he anoints the Savior. Jesus said, 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The Savior had to be prepared for the road ahead, for it was indeed a rough and rugged one, and he was tempted in every possible way, until at last he was brought to the cross, the cross he must bear, the cross that we too must bear. What a disgrace and what a pain our Savior went through. But because of the power of the Holy Spirit, God's anointing, he was filled with the gifts and grace of the Spirit needed for the task. He is commissioned to be prophet, priest, and king. He is prepared for and sent to the distressed and downhearted people. There are those in prison or captivity, but also those caught in a confining and oppressing social situation, according to Isaiah 58, verse 6. There were those in confusion, poverty, and those who seemed to be without hope. And there were those who were both physically and spiritually wretched. No fulfillment but total frustration was written as a caption upon the world. And it took an anointed savior to be the great physician. He anoints the servant. The work of the servant is by no means any different from the task of our savior Jesus Christ. And when I speak of servants, I'm talking about those called to that ministry, those called in that social or what we call disciples of Christ in the sense of separated or set apart and which we call holy orders, priests and deacons. The work of the servants, and I'm talking about in our church, you know, but those who are called to that special work of doing the will and the mission of God. The work of the servant is by no means different. It demands sacrifice, commitment, and endurance. It is sometimes hard and difficult. And I ask the question, how are we going to endure if we are not clothed in the spirit? How are we going to do this ministry of God if we are not clothed or anointed by the spirit? So he anoints the servant. He anoints the saints. And this anointing is needed by the church universal when we talk about the saints. By us. If the church is going to prevail and survive in this era, in this generation, at this particular time in our lives, in this now world, the anointing of the saint is an imperative. Be aware that the words in Matthew 16, 18 says, the gates of hell shall not prevail are dependent upon the anointing of the Spirit. Jesus, in his speech, came to a point when he says, I am here to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And so we come to the point, almost getting there, the assigning of the Spirit. There's an assignment. The assignment of the Spirit is strictly to preach. It is very clear the Christian is not without an assignment. Jesus' purpose in that world is our mandate in this world. We are here to preach the revelation of divine sympathy. Sympathy, my dear friends in Christ, is a feeling for or a capacity for sharing in the interests of another. This is why the servants of God, of God are called to preach. Preach the gospel to the poor, showing them that they are not neglected in God's plan. 
but can be assured that he is still the great supplier. So then what is preaching? It is spoken communication on divine truth. So what are we to preach? He says, preach salvation. Preach the gospel glad tidings. Preach the fact that all men everywhere can be saved and can come boldly before the throne of grace. Verse 18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, Jesus said, to bring good news to the poor. So he preached the glad tidings. He told them about God and the kingdom of God and what was the expectation of God. He preached the love of God for God's children. And so we too must continue to preach the good news. We are to preach liberation, he says, to set at liberty. All men can be set free from the bondage of sin and control of the enemy. Man can be liberated from guilt. From guilt, sorry. Jesus said, we are to proclaim, he was sent to proclaim release to the captives. Those of us who are caught up in the world of today. Those who are caught up and bound by sin in our world. The word of God. And we are the ones to bring the good news, to set them free from their spiritual bondage. He says, we are to preach the release of the depressed sufferers. There are some of who are suffering everywhere, but can be helped. And I want us to narrow down to Trinidad and Tobago when we talk about depressed sufferers, especially among our young people in our day, today's world. Many, you can hear many, are suffering from what we call depression. A lot of young people. And then there are those because of situations around them are depressed souls. And it's a real issue. And so Jesus says to us, those of us who are called to bring the message, to go out there, to reach out, to touch them in our homes, to touch them on the streets, to touch them by the hair and the byway, to bring release to those depressed sufferers. He says, we have to preach sight to the blind. And there are those who are blind both physically and spiritually. But we can offer in our preaching, in our love, the sun who shines by day and moon who shines by night. We are to proclaim and preach to those who cannot see because of the darkness that is covering them. Those who cannot see the love of God because of whatever that has taken place in them, the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit can break it. You know the songwriter says, break every chain. How can we break the chain? Through the power of God's Holy Spirit. Break it, that our blind can see the truth of God's word. He says we have to bring release to the battered. There are those who are knocked hither and thither by the whip and fancies of this world, beaten and battered by sin, drugs, and depression. I know that sometimes some of us in the church don't like to hear the word sin, but sin is a real issue. It's a real issue, but what we need to understand, it has already been countered by Jesus Christ upon the cross. And so we have to preach that revelation to liberate our people. We walk by every day in our streets. Take notice. Every day we can see a new person, a, new, a young man, a new one on the street, a young woman, a new one on the street. And you know when they're new, they're close, still looking in good shape. And you pass by next two weeks and they're all tattered and black and dirty with dirt and scum. They are broken and beaten by drugs and depression. Drugs, my dear friends in Christ, that causes the destruction of our young men and young women. And we ask, what can we do? You see, maybe we can get in there and destroy the, the, the structure, but by the prayer and the power of God's Holy Spirit, we can break down the walls. We can take back our young people from the hands 
of the devil. He says we are to bring release to the broken. He says we are to preach jubilation, to preach the acceptable year. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ said in the gospel, I've been anointed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This was one of the feasts of the Jews, which was celebrated once every 50 years, a time when the slaves and prisoners were released. Here, the year of Jubilee is set in contrast with the day of vengeance. Since it will pass off without violence, the day of redemption is also called God's day of vengeance. It is typical of deliverance. The contrast between year and day is important. God's grace and his attitude towards man. Vengeance is an occasional judgment necessary to remove the obstacles of his grace. And today, especially for us in Trinidad and Tobago, in the Anglican Church, we celebrate a jubilee of how many years? Today, we celebrate the commemoration of, of abolition of slavery. Today, Jesus Christ's word becomes so cruel and so new to us in the sense that we can sit and understand wherever we are to this morning, wherever we are, to put ourselves in the position under his grace. That be the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he says, you are experiencing a jubilee today in our country, in our church. And the jubilee means it's freedom. It means that we have the opportunity to say, Lord, I am sorry. That we can turn to our brother and sister and say, I am sorry. It's a new beginning. The Holy Spirit has given the blessing and the anointing. Started with Jesus Christ. And he set the mission for us, his manifesto. What we have to do as Christians, as disciples, to bring release to God's children, to celebrate this jubilee, to look back into our lives and our situation and understand that our God is saying, today is your day. Wherever you are this morning, today is your day. Jesus Christ is among you. He is in your presence. He has brought the jubilee home and he says, you are free, and whoever God sets free is free indeed. My dear friends in Christ, let us embrace this moment. Let us embrace the presence of God's Holy Spirit among us. And let us reach out. Let us reach out and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercies. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Christ, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand as we affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our Anglican cycle of prayer this morning, we remember and we pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and the Church in Wales. In the province of the West Indies, we pray for the Most Reverend Dr. Howard Ainsley Gregory, Archbishop of the West Indies. In the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, we remember and we pray for our Bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley, for his life, his work, and his ministry among us. We also remember and pray for our retired bishops Clive, Rawl, and the Calvin. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this nation of Trinidad and Tobago. 
and all who make decisions on our behalf, the President, the Prime Minister, the Chief Justice, the Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, the Leader of the Opposition, and all members of Parliament. Remember the clergy, the vestry, and the congregation of this parish in Laventille, the St. Matthias Parish, and all who serve here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the spirit of liberation this morning, we pray for the liberation of our hearts, our minds, from all forms of oppression, wherever they exist. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the parish of St. Barnabas, Pleasantville, and we remember the Reverend Dr. Steve West, Archdeacon Emeritus, and the Reverend Father Fitzgerald Diabro. We also remember and pray for the fellowship of vocation in our diocese. Lord, in your mercy, we continue it in the session form B in our Book of Common Prayer on page 107, Form B. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give grace to, to do your will in all that we undertake. That our work may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also share in your heavenly kingdom. And in a moment of silence, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Together, Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask. Help us to ask only what accords to your will and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the act of penitence found on page 123, 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In a moment of silence, as we stand before Almighty God, we open our hearts to him as we seek his mercy. Use in form B, let us now therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We just acknowledge each other with the sign of peace peace of Christ. Offer to him number 709 in hymns old and new. Hymn number 709. We are marching in the light of God.
continue on page 126, presentation of the offerings, page 126, form B. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves and our lives and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable and holy and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become the channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall use the proper preface for, of God the Father on page 130. The common preface of God the Father, 130. Eucharistic prayer E on page 142. We continue at the bottom of page 126. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty and everlasting God. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you. Join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We continue with the presentation of the offerings on page 126, form B. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, and this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice as this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. So may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ, our Lord. We will use the common preface of God the Father on page 130, Eucharistic prayer E on page 142. We continue at the bottom of page 126. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you. Join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you, and, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and ending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, and with all your sons and daughters who share 
in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The first form of the breaking of the bread. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Angus Day. Away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we shall sing glad songs, praise to him. Communion hymn number 622 in our CPWI hymn book. Hymn number 622. i 
now have the post-communion prayer found on page 148. We say the prayer at the bottom of page 148. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and to proclaim the word and works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is hymn number 433 in our CPWI hymn book, hymn number 433, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. In the spirit of emancipation, brothers and sisters, we leave you with a quote from Nelson Mandela when he said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Shalom, brothers and sisters.